Hey everybody, Ernie N here from SciFiDragon.net. Uh, today I'm bringing you a little video about building a science fiction subject. This is the second of my two videos on the MPC Space 1999 kit. In this video, I'll guide you through my buildup of the Space 1999 Comlock model. The Comlock model is very simple, and it's a straightforward build. I do want to point out, however, that the kit's instructions, while clear and easy to follow, lack any directions at all regarding painting the model or applying decals. You have to refer to the kit's box art for color references and decal positioning. Okay, here we go. As with any model building project, I began this one by taking time to do a little planning. I decided I'd add a very simple lighting system to the Comlock and no sound effects. The lighting module I wanted to create is very simple but it still took a little time to figure out where to put an on-off switch, how to mount the LEDs, and exactly where to put the LEDs. This was all easy enough to figure out in my mind, but I diagrammed it so I could show you what I came up with in the planning stage. The first thing I had to figure out was where to put the push button that would act as an on-off switch for my lighting system. While there are buttons all over the Comlock, the only one that seemed to work well with the push button switch I have is the round button on the top of the comlock. Look at the diagram I've got up on the screen. If you decide to build this model and add lighting of your own, your placement of the switch may be different depending on the size and type of switch you have available and how you're able to mount it inside the comlock. I began work on the comlock by making the extra parts needed to create the lighting system. The lighting system began by cutting a piece of 030 thick styrene sheet to fit edge to edge inside the upper section of the comlock. This plastic plate measures 1 and 6 eighths inches wide by 1 and a quarter inches deep and will hold the lighting unit's LEDs in place. Once I was sure the plate would fit in place properly, I punched a hole in the front right corner. This will be next to the on-off switch and will let me run wires from the switch to the LEDs in the battery pack. I marked off the approximate center of the view screen on the LED mounting plate and drilled holes for the main lighting LED using a number 60 wire drill bit. These holes will align a bright white 5mm LED under the Comlock screen. Taking a bit of creative license, I've decided to give the Comlock a little extra zip by way of a second lighting feature. I'm going to put in a second smaller white LED aimed at the side of the Comlock to light up two of the buttons. The second LED I'm going to install is a flat 2mm white LED. I bent the leads of this LED at a 90 degree angle so it'll face the side of the comlock to light up those buttons I want to enhance. Styrene plastic tubes over the LED's leads will keep it at the height I want. I ran the smaller LED's leads through the holes I drilled in the mounting plate and glued the plastic spacers to the top of the plate using plastic welder. I laminated together two pieces of 030 thickness styrene sheet to form a mounting block for the on-off switch. The switch was glued to the block with plastic welder and reinforced with small pieces of styrene rod on either side. The thickness of the mounting block will center the switch's push button inside the kit's round plastic button. This is where the switch will be installed. Note how the push button extends into the opening for the kit's round plastic button part. The kit's plastic button will be welded only to the top of the push button, leaving it free to move 
but keeping it free from shifting out of place. Okay, the new parts making up the Comlox lighting system are completed. The next step is to paint the Comlox parts from the kit. I'll start by spray painting the inside of the Comlox with flat black to block any light from coming through the plastic parts. I'm using frog painter's tape to mask the outside of the Comlox, and I'll use flat black automotive paint to lightproof the inside of the model. Be back in a minute. Okay, here's the Comlock with its interior blacked out. I just have to remove the masking tape from outside the Comlock and this step is finished. As long as I was painting the inside of the Comlock black, I also took time to spray paint the appropriate buttons black or white. Next, I'll apply decals to the square channel selector buttons. It'll be much easier to do this now than after the buttons are installed. I'll just apply the decals and be back in a minute. Before I airbrush the Comlox body parts, I'm going to paint the remaining buttons according to the MPC box art. I've already spray painted the four small square buttons white, so all I have to paint by hand are the one long button and the four clear buttons. The long button, or detailing part, I'm not really sure what this is, just gets a coat of red paint. I could use to me a standard flat red, but I think that's a little too bright. So I'll paint this part with Mission Models MMP number no. 3 red.
this point, all the button parts are painted. It's time to move on to painting the comlock body. I was thinking of using Tamiya XF57 buff, but I found a bottle of Tamiya XF55 deck tan. This is almost a perfect match to the color on the MPC box top. The water-based acrylic paint will be thinned with alcohol, then applied with an airbrush. This will make it dry faster and will result in a flatter finish. I'll have that done in just a minute. Be right back. See? I said I'd be right back. Anyway, the Comlock is now a soft tan color with black bands as shown on the MPC box top. I also covered all the body parts with Tester's Dull Coat to seal the paint and protect the finish. The rest of the build is very easy. First, the button parts get installed.
best thing to install before assembling the Comlox body is the lighting module. The kit's round plastic button part has to be put in place first, then the push button can be glued in place behind it. Some time has passed and the plastic welder has fully set on the switch mounting block and the connection to the kit's button part. I'll give this a quick test. Okay, that's working. So I'll install the LED mounting plate and apply a few drops of plastic welder to keep it in place. Next, select a decal and apply it to the clear view screen part. The lighting I'm using for the view screen is rather bright. It might overpower the thin decals that come with the kit. So I've copied the decals onto peel and stick label paper and covered that with clear laminating film. The white adhesive paper is thin enough to light up well without any glare from the LED that's directly below it. Once the decal you selected is in place, the screen can be added to the underside of the bezel part. Then the bezel can be put in place on top of the com lock. Please note, the bezel part does not need to be glued into place. It's designed to stay in place on its own. 
Not gluing it down gives you the option of changing the screen image at a later date if you want to. That's the end of this little video. I hope you enjoyed it. This MPC kit was a lot of fun to build, and I recommend it for anyone who likes oddball science fiction models. Remember to visit scifidragon.net 